All right, all right, all right. So we are getting down to the wire, guys. This is it. This is the last episode before the season finale. I'm not sure. I don't know where I'm going to be next week. But if I do have Friday off, if I'm not working or doing something like that, I will most certainly go live right after the episode. Because I just feel like with the way this season has been going, I feel like they've teased us with so many things that we have yet to see. I just feel like everything that they've teased us with that we have yet to see is going to be in this finale episode. So I want to talk about it as soon as I can with you guys. So if I do have the time, I will be going live that night after the season finale. I will most certainly let you know for sure on Friday. But that's the plan as of right now. I really, really want to do that because this episode was good. This episode was good. I think again, it was a filler episode because we are going to get some good T next episode. And guys, what do you think is going to happen with these 10 extra episodes? Like what, what are they going to say? Like, are we going to get that lady? Remember that blonde lady from season one with that young felon? Are we going to see any of her story? Are we going to get a follow up on all of this drama that happened this season? I have no idea, but I am hooked. And my mom, my mom was just like, I don't care what I'm doing. I will be here with you next week. So if she's feeling like she wants to get on camera, I might bring my mom on too. So we'll see. We got a lot going on within this episode. A lot happening next week that I'm so excited about. But since we're here, let's talk about this week's episode. Okay, so let's start with the couple that had the least amount of camera time this episode. Brittany and Marcelino. So their storyline this episode was questionable in the beginning, but it got really sweet at the end. Let's first talk about how Brittany is now fully pregnant, which is so weird because we just got a scene of her saying that she's pregnant. Now like Marcelino is rubbing the belly and she looks a good eight months. So anyway, they're in the market and they're talking about, Brittany is talking about being pregnant and you know, all the responsibilities that come with the kid. And then Marcelino, out of nowhere, the same dude who was in his Kia Soul crying outside of the prison, can't wait for Brittany to get out. It's all of a sudden like, oh, well, you know, kids are a lot of responsibility and I don't know if I'm ready to tie down myself to that kind of responsibility. And I have all of these dreams and I don't know if a kid is gonna take that away from me. I'm like, you have all of these questions for a dude that willingly put his sperm into a woman that he just met. That's on you, brother. If you didn't want kids, if you're thinking about how much of a responsibility it is, you shouldn't have been nothing in Britney. Period. Well, I wanted to drag this proposal because I feel like this couple is forcing a lot, but this, this proposal to me was the real deal. I felt like Britney didn't know. I knew what was happening because it was just, it's Vegas. <laughs> corny okay I love it but this was mad corny but I knew it was happening and I guys I don't know I am a sucker for proposals and weddings I was into it I was into it yes it was corny but I was like oh my goodness you know when she saw the ring and the ring box lit up I was there I was all in it I am that girl okay so Marcelina proposes to Brittany she accepts and it's just really sweet I watched it and I was really happy for those two so congrats guys on everything now go and celebrate in your rec center home and have a good time. By the way, some chick from Vegas commented on this and she was mad pissed that I came at their walls. I was just like, wait a minute. I have friends who live in Vegas. I know for sure that not everybody in Vegas has prison walls. So I don't know what community center y'all all living in, but I was just dragging that apartment complex. I wasn't talking about no other parts of Vegas, which I love. And my friend lives in a beautiful home in Vegas. So I don't know where y'all live, but sis, keep that energy to yourself. Cause I don't care, God is good. Ugh. I was about to move on to Caitlin and Matt. And then I realized that I forgot to talk to you guys about one of the sweetest moments within this proposal. Marcelino gave Brittany his grandmother's wedding band. The alcoholism aside, that was so beautiful. And Brittany was like, no, it's fine. And fits. I was just like, oh, there is love there. Within this scamming storyline, there is really, really love. And I am happy for those two. No, I am. <laughs> to think about it because Marcelino been getting on my nerves. Brittany too. But I'm a sucker for a proposal. 
So Caitlin and Matt, I'm really glad that production got Caitlin a, a hotel room to stay in for a few days because I feel like she needed that. Like she just lost her mom. She's dealing with her new boyfriend out of prison who's an addict. There was just a lot going on for her and I just feel like she needed that space to deal with herself and mourn in peace. And I just felt like Matt was crowding that space with all of his like neediness. Like the guy is so needy and she just didn't have anything to give because she's dealing with the loss of her mom. So I was really happy that production did that because I, I was just like, this girl needs something. She really does need something before she breaks. And I was glad she got that time. But the whole time that she has this time to herself, she's calling Matt. She's trying to see where he's at. She finally finds the dude and he's in jail. <laughs> He is in jail and I'm like, Caitlin, sis, get free, get free. You are literally dating a newborn. That's what Matt is. Matt is a newborn child. He needs to be raised. You are not in a position to raise anyone. Truth be told, you need to finish raising yourself. You stop somewhere along the line of your mother's addiction and you just stop growing. You got to live your best life outside of this man. You have to grow. You have to learn yourself and you have to get your head on straight because you are attracted to some foolishness. This guy is just not good for you. Matt is not good for you. He is a newborn child who was obsessed with prison. Listen, go let him live in his prison resort and you go and live your best life, sis get free since we're here shout out to the android users who got me together in the comment section here iphone for life anyway can we just talk about how when caitlin finds out that matt is in prison like they get in the argument he's like i gotta go where you gotta go you in prison anyway he says he got to go he hangs up on her can you imagine taking a collect call from somebody in prison y'all get in an argument and the person in prison hangs up the phone on you Ciao, Caitlyn, you deserve better. Anyway, he, Matt, hangs up the phone on Caitlyn. She throws it. And I'm like, this is another time where this woman has thrown her phone. And every time we cut back to a scene after she has thrown her phone, this phone is in pristine condition. And I'm just like, first of all, sis, who was making your phone? The damn Pentagon? Like, how are you throwing this phone all across this freaking town and it is still in great shape. Who's your carrier? I need to know. Clint and Tracy. So obviously Tracy is out on parole because there's no way, cause she's talking to Clint on the phone and she's telling him that she might, um, she's facing like 20 years in prison or something like that. And I'm just like, well, you're currently not facing it now because you're obviously out on parole because there's no way Unless she's scamming like Lizzie. There is no way that she's able to like live tweet with the show. Guys, she live tweets every Friday and she always hashtag crack or crackhead. Crackhead is in her bio. <laughs> this chick is true to brand. Listen. Whatever she want, we TV. Pay her. Don't pay her in crack, though. You'll be, you know, you're going to be an accessory, okay? Don't pay her in crack, but I'm saying whatever this girl wants, give it to her because she is good TV. So I think that she's out on parole to be tweeting like this. She cannot be doing this from prison. Clint decides to go and meet with his parents to talk about Tracy because I think the parents are threatening to cut him off if he continues to stay in this relationship with Tracy. So he goes to his parents' estate, okay? When they pulled back the camera and gave us the full shot of this land that his family lives on, I was just like, Clinton, how did you turn out like this? They have a beautiful home, a thriving business. The house is always clean. How did Clint turn out like that? Was the mother drinking? Something was going on. Something was happening in that womb when she was carrying that child. I don't know if she was drinking or chewing tobacco. Something happened because Clint, guys, he got like a 52-year-old body, which is odd because he keep on lying and saying he's 37. And then he has like the mind of a child and not like... A diagnosis you know what I mean like not like when you know that there's something mentally challenged about this person that's why I never said that about him that he's mentally challenged I just think that just like with Megan the people in his life have stunted his growth I think that Clint would have turned out different if one he put on sunblock you know and moisturized two if his parents allowed him to grow up I think for some reason maybe he was a miracle baby they just stunted this grown man's growth because He's talking to Tracy. Tracy's calling him from prison. 
I don't know how long they were having this conversation, but Clint just starts crying like a child, like a newborn baby crying for its mother's bosom. I was just like, dude, what are you doing? Just to hear his voice like crack and him like wailing and, oh, she wants to bring on with me. I'm like, Clint, you're a grown man with a child, a teenage boy. Women, you have got to stop opening up your womb to every and anybody. Like, ladies, respect the cooch. Respect the cooch. We carry life, okay? You cannot just be letting anybody into your life capital, whatever, the womb. <laughs> like, you, we, you gotta be wise. You gotta be wise with the coochie. Anyway, so he's like wailing and crying and Tracy is just like, I can't believe it, I was siding with Tracy because Tracy seems to be sensible in this conversation where she's calling him from prison, right? And she's saying that she just doesn't, I agree with her guys because she was like, I just don't need all of this stuff, all of this drama from your family because I think that maybe somehow she got word that his family did not want her to be with him and she was just like, listen, I got a lot to deal with. I'm facing 20 years in prison. I'm fighting an addiction. This is just too much for me and it felt like she was, I don't think she was trying to break up with him. I think she was just trying to say, I probably need space to get myself together. She couldn't say much because Clint starts wailing. Then he hangs up the phone on her and throws his Pentagon phone. I'm telling you, the Pentagon is supplying this cast with phones because he throws the phone in a truck, in the back of a truck. It doesn't break. How do I know that the phone doesn't break? Because Tracy calls him back and get from prison. First of all, what kind of prison is this where your phone call ends and you can like uh, star 69 and call the person back? Like how, how did this happen? I thought you get one phone call and that's it. Anyway, she calls him back and she's like, you hung up the phone. He's like, yeah, because I thought you want to bring up with me. And she's just like, no, she can't get like two or three words in before he hangs up the phone again, throws his Pentagon phone that doesn't shatters and goes ballistic. Like he just, oh, you won, you won. <laughs> offset, okay? You won, get this mic off of me. Then his mother runs out and she's like all scared. He goes after the mother and I'm just like, is he gonna be his mama up? Is he gonna be his mama up on national TV? Because Clint gives me that. He gives me that he was such a protected child that he could like smack his mom if she ain't cook his oatmeal right and she would sit there and take it and go cry in the corner till the dad got back home. I feel like that's the kind of relationship they got. So he goes off on the mom, he goes off on production, all because Tracy is just like, I need to get myself together. I really can't be in this kind of relationship. Like, if you love your goddess, don't you want her to get well? He gives me Scott. I feel like he wants her to stay addicted so that she can stay dependent on him. That's the same thing that I think Scott wants from Lizzie. And I just, mm -mm, I don't like it. Oh, and before we move on, can we talk about how Clint's mom was just like, I want you to have a good Christian woman? Miss, <laughs> slow your roll. Christian women deal with enough. What we don't need is crazy Clint. Fogging up our prayers with all of his mess. Hell to the gnaw. You know what? I was Clint's father watching this whole thing go down because Clint's dad was so disgusted. I feel like this dude just wants to get old, live a happy life and retire, but he can't because he has a kid that will never grow up. He has a wife that will never allow this child to grow up. I feel like the dad Although, yes, it takes two to make a kid. I feel like the mom is kind of responsible for stunting Clint. And the dad is responsible for watching it go down. Because I feel like at any moment, the dad could have stepped in and been like, no, you are a grown man, go hit on. But I think he just wants to appease his wife. Because even when she was doing all this crying, trying to talk to Clint, the dad was just sitting there like, like, he was just so ready for Clint to leave his house. He's done. He wants no parts of Clint. He knows that he made a huge mistake, but this mistake is too damn old to correct. He just wants to have peace, and the mom will not let this man grow up. Insane the way he acted. The way he acted, not just to production, to his mother. You won! This is what you wanted! I'm like, lady... You're going to die quicker dealing with this man child. Get free. All y'all need to get free. So we open up with Lizzie making Scott a prison pie. And did she pour like two 
huge bottles of coffee mate into a bowl and was putting like the um the filling from oreos into that pie i was sitting here watching her make this and i was like you know what this ain't no damn prison pie scott stay woke she is trying to kill you i have watched enough snap okay i have watched enough id channel to know when a spouse is trying to kill their partner slowly so that it won't ever be detected back to them. And by Scott being so coochie-matized, okay, I know Lizzie is already on his life insurance policy. So listen, she's just doing what she got to do because she's making this concoction. And I'm like, there is no way that you think this man is going to eat this and survive. Sis, you know what you're doing. I'm telling y'all, take notes on Lizzie. Mother got the game on lock. Oh, poor Scott. So Lizzie is doing her whole thing, lying about not wanting to have sex because she's a Christian now or born again virgin and all of this stuff. And, you know, well, I don't know. I just felt like she was teasing Scott at this point and like playing with him. You know he wants sex, Lizzie. You know he wants sex. So then to look him in the eye and be like, do you want sex? And he's like, no, I don't want sex. And she's like, oh, no, you're lying to me. I know you want sex. Ma'am. You got these huge brown titties in this man's face. He has been supplying you with years, playing with himself. He got you in the flesh right in front of him and you are teasing him. Lizzie, you know what you're doing. And this is, you know, listen, I am pro woman all day, right? You don't have to do nothing that you don't want to do with your body, but Lizzie what you do is this you know what you do scott is sitting over there fiending all he wants is a little nibble you know what i mean all he want to do is just rest his head on the titty real quick you know he just wants just a little taste a little taste and lizzie won't give him none <laughs> she's still tricking even out of prison the game is so ingrained in this woman i think even when she don't know she tricking the dude she tricking him sis so they get into this whole argument about Scott wanting sex, Scott not wanting sex. And then Scott in his confessional is just like, she thinks that I'm lying about not wanting sex. I'm holding back the fact that I ain't got no money and I don't want to talk to her about it. So they just get into this whole argument. And then Lizzie walks out to go do her confessional. And while she's doing her confessional, I guess Scott can hear the whole thing. So he walks out and he's like, seriously? And then they start to get into it. And the whole time, because I'm this messy neighbor, okay? The whole time I'm thinking about the guest at the hotel. And I'm just like, I would have my ear to the door. <laughs> Child turning the TV down and everything. Like, what the hell? Because they were just having like this back and forth about not trusting each other. Eyes looking a certain way. Then we get a flashback to the best scene of this season for me. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. <laughs> Lizzie, you know what? If you want to transition out of tricking, I know it may be hard for you because this is what you've been doing your entire adult life. You would do really great with a uh, cartoon voiceover. Take that gem of information. Talk to the producers and find out how you can become a voiceover actor because I think you got a great voice for cartoons. I really, really do. It worked out for Regina King. So their segment pretty much just wraps up with them having like this unresolved back and forth argument and Scott like holding back the fact that he's broke and Lizzie holding back the fact that she's tricking him. So the argument doesn't get resolved. But what we do find out is that we get this weird clip. They always put like these weird clips in that don't go at all with the episode. But I think it's just like fun fact about this prisoner. So we get this clip, this confessional of Lizzie who looks high out of her mind. And she's talking about how she hid her cell phone from like the guards or whatever in prison. And guys, you know what? I feel like we all kind of knew where she hid it and how she hid all of her stuff. I don't feel like we needed to know. I mean, we've all watched enough Orange is the New Black to know where women can hide stuff, right? You know what I mean? We've seen a lot of Narcos TV shows, so we know how people hide drugs and stuff. I just didn't need Lizzie to confirm it. You know what I mean? I didn't need to know that you're hiding your cell phone in your labia. Sis, you could have kept that information to your damn self. So let's end with this messy thruple. I, guys, I just thought about it. So I watched Michael's live again. And one thing that I left out that I wanted to talk to you about, Michael does his own braids. <laughs> 
He said that he has been braiding his hair since he was 12. When he said that, I started thinking back to his feeding cornrows. And I just sat there imagining Michael with this braid weave here, feeding in his cornrow braids, getting ready before he shoots this sex scene with Megan. Ciao. This is the cast that keeps on giving. Oh my gosh, so Megan is still in Rochester, New York. She's looking for a job and place to stay and she's going to go visit Michael in prison. Girl, go home, go home. You have had so many signs that this will never work out. Why are you still here? That prison peen is that good? Child, wait till you get some legitimate dick. You gonna go crazy. Crazy. Some non-felon, well-mannered penis. You gonna lose your damn mind. The world ain't ready. So we then find out from Sarah that the P.O. is the messiest of them all. Because the P.O., hashtag producer, told Sarah that Michael is seeing another woman, that he got locked up with another woman. And somehow the PO gave Sarah Michael's phone. So Sarah went through his phone and found everything about him and Megan. I do believe that part, but I also believe that, that the producers told her what was going on as well. But I also believe how careless Michael is that he put every drop of his cheating within that phone. And so Sarah finds the phone and she goes through it and then she runs to emmy who is serving caucasian stud and she tells her everything that has happened and emmy's just sitting there like okay he's like girl i told you not surprised at all so she's running down everything that she found in michael's phone and then this fool calls her and as soon as she gets this is cell block so 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 she's like oh oh and she's acting like she's ready to read him for filth michael gets on the phone and just lies and deflects and sarah starts doing all this crying because this is what sarah does right this is how you know that michael will always have sarah she's heated she's heartbroken she's talking to emmy about everything that he has done to her he calls she gets heated because she's ready to read him down as soon as Michael starts talking, anger leaves her and she just starts getting quiet, doing these little, you know, quiet breakdowns. And I'm just like, he got you. He has everything with her. He has her mind. He has her heart. He has her soul. He got her coachy. Like Michael just has all of Sarah. And from the way she tweets, he currently still has her. And Megan, like still wrapped up. I could never be wrapped up with a dude that's 5'7". Five, 5'7", seven. Five, seven, ladies. <laughs> anyway, petty, petty. Still detoxing. <laughs> and I'm looking good. Cheekbones is coming back. Cheekbones is coming back. Check. Sarah is trying to confront Michael about everything and Michael is like, what? Who are you talking about? He hasn't answered not one question. He is so good. Like he just plays her like a fiddle. But can we talk about Emmy? While this whole thing was going on in the back, I think that Emmy didn't know that the cameras were on her. Because when Sarah was going off on Michael on the phone, Emmy was sitting back like, <laughs> getting her life. I was like, Emmy is me. Emmy is me watching mess that don't involve me, okay? Because Emmy was getting her whole life watching this whole thing go down. And then you cut back to her and she's a concerned friend. So I was like, Emmy, I don't think you knew the cameras were on you at that moment where you were living for the mess, okay? You can tell that Sarah was about to blow because the faux black scent came back. I promise you, I promise you, girl. Stop watching BET. We do not talk like that. It was, it's too much. It's too much. I find that when non-black people impersonate how they think black people talk, it's always black people from a certain uh, class and from like New York City. <laughs> like it's always black people from the Bronx. It's never like black people from the South. It's, ne it's, ne it's never a, a Southern belle, you know what I mean? Like it's never a black chick from Canada. It's always a black person from the East Coast and from a certain class. Why is that? Are they the most interesting? Or are they the ones that you feel comfortable making fun of? Hmm. Message. Sarah's faux black scent aside, I will say this, I felt bad for her. I really, really did. Because at the end of the day, no matter how annoying Sarah is on this show and on Twitter, 
she's still Michael's wife. Like, I just can't get over that fact. Not only is she his wife, she is the mother of his children. And this dude, her husband, guys, her husband, took her on national TV. This was his idea. Took her on national TV and played her in front of the world. In front of the world. Now she's pregnant with this child, about to pop, and watching this whole thing go down. I would be humiliated humiliated first of all not only would i be humiliated i would be fighting everybody i would be fighting michael his mama the po okay megan her entire family yes megan and the clumps will be catching these hands everybody the producers I, everybody in rochester new york okay i would just be so enraged like i don't know how this chick does it i really really don't because yes she is defensive yes she is annoying we just gotta admit that right but she's still doing her obligation for this show. You know what I mean? Like she's tweeting about it. She's um, talking about it on Instagram. She's basically advertising, which is what you have to do when you sign up for these reality TV shows. You're contractually obligated to advertise when stuff is coming on to keep the viewers engaged and to give the fans a little bit of information, but not too much. Like she's doing what she needs to do uh, to keep us interested in this show. But ugh. Oh my goodness, after I beat up the whole damn town, you wouldn't be able to find me. You would not be able to find me. I wouldn't want to be seen. Like this is, it's just so sad. It's so sad, like your husband is supposed to be your protector. Not just your lover, you know what I mean? But your protector. And he just played this girl. Not only did he play her, he told the world that he did not love her, that he was in love with the side chick. And the only reason why he was having sex with her was to get to his daughter because she holds that kid for ransom when he doesn't do what she wants to do. And she's carrying his child currently, caring for his first one and pregnant with the second. I wouldn't wish that on my enemy. Like, ooh, that has to hurt. Then it wraps up with this fake confrontation. So Sarah decides that she wants to go and meet up with Megan. She's found all the information. The producers let her know where Megan is staying. They even let Megan know that Sarah wants to meet with her. And Megan, scared behind, is all nervous, you know what I mean? Because she don't want to meet with Sarah. But Sarah is saying that she wants to meet with Megan to let her know what's going on. But the whole time she's riding up there, I'm like, sis, you want to be messy. This is why you want to go up there. You want to be messy. You're pissed off. You want to start some mess with the side chick because you're not getting any information from Michael. And the only thing that you have from Michael is the pictures and the text that he has sent her. And you were pissed off because he doesn't talk to you like that. You didn't see pictures of her naked. You didn't see videos. So you know everything that he has done with her. And Megan! Megan, you are 28 years old. You let some dude film you having sex. You let some dude take pictures of you naked. You just did the dumbest thing imaginable. I mean, pardon my words, you just get dumber and dumber. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Start that relationship with a man that's incarcerated. Dumb, dumb, dumb. To whoever is dating a felon right now, listen, somebody got to tell you the truth. You are dating someone who is institutionalized. Once they go to prison, it's a wrap, okay? And I'm talking to family members. So, you know, I, I know people. I know somebody right now. Love them. Love them. They on my heart. They're, you know, they married to somebody on death row. Why? Why? Anyway, it's just, the, she just makes the dumbest decisions. So anyway, Sarah is acting like, she wants to tell Megan and warn her woman to woman about what's going on. But sis, the whole time you're driving up there, you're talking about Megan's looks. You're talking about how you look better because you've seen videos of her, whatever. And you don't want her to come at you wrong. You're going up there for a mess. You got your hair braided to the back. You're doing all of the moves, okay? I see it. I hope you can fight because don't let them quiet suburban chicks fool you, okay? They will pull out some acid and some bleach. See, people from the hood or people who try to act hood, we fight differently. I might pick up a brick, okay? But I'm always throwing hands. Them suburban people, they will kill you and bury you in their basement and not even say a damn thing, okay? The only way they will ever find your body is if that house is sold and the person who buys it wants to remodel and they find your dead body. Suburban people are crazy, okay? Just because you in the hood and it's a little different because you got to walk up 90 stairs don't mean you gangster. Them suburban people kill a whole damn family. Won't say nothing for years. <laughs> years. 
Watch the ID channel. Stay woke. The majority of the murders on the ID channel happen in the suburbs. Stay woke. Stay woke. But I digress. Sarah, unfortunately, has now gone full Khloe Kardashian. She is just mad at Megan. She is like fuming at Megan and she's riding up there to beat with her and then it doesn't happen. Why? Because we TV is playing with our emotions. So we are not going to get the sit down until the season finale. We get a little bit of clips or whatever of Sarah talking about, don't talk to me like that. Don't, don't speak to me like that. Sarah, you're not doing nothing. You're not doing nothing and Megan not doing nothing. So I just feel like this whole sit down is going to be anti climactic but I will be there to review it again I'm going to see if I can do a live right after just look out for my YouTube and for my Instagram and I'll put it on Twitter as well I'll let you know that day Friday of next week if I'm going to be able to go live because I really want to talk to you guys about this episode right now after so stay tuned for that if i can't go live right after you will get the full edited review either the next day or within that weekend that is it for me with this review i enjoyed it you know what i mean like it didn't give me as much juice as the other episodes it's a filler episode i'm cool with that because the season finale is next week and that's when we gonna get all the ten. i cannot wait Anyway, thank you guys so much for sticking with me and supporting me throughout this channel. Thank you for all who have donated. Thank you for all who have liked, commented, subscribed, and shared. Thank you for your continued support and views. I appreciate it, and I love you guys so much for stopping by. See you next week for the following episode of Love After Lockup. Love you guys.